Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today I wanted to talk about the Cutlass redesign, focusing mainly on the Cutlass Black because that's kind of what we've been shown so far. The old Cutlass Black was probably the most controversial ship in Star Citizen. It was overly promised, being able to do so many roles in game, uh, as well as kind of fighting cargo, and um, it's going to be fast, manoeuvrable, modular, had lots of multi-crew, but all of the gameplay that we actually had from the ship, which is flyable, left it kind of feeling lacking. It was a easy brick to kill with no real definition of its role that people could agree on. I want to jump into the 90 seconds or two minutes of Josh Coombs talking about the Cutlass rework and then we're going to talk about it ourselves. What is different on the Cutlass? Everything's different about the Cutlass. Whole game's change. All the proportions uh, are cooler now. They're a lot cooler. Um, armaments you're going to notice some differences there um we've moved a few of the obsolete systems around uh replaced them with stuff that's more fun some rating doors for uh rating depending on which cutlass you have is what you'll be doing out of those doors backdrop uh door uh a lot of these changes are the result of our metrics being dialed in and they just they have to be pushed, pulled, and and tweaked to be correct now. So the turrets are correct, the, the angle of the back ramps are correct, the doors are correct, inner exits are correct. The cockpit's completely different. You're not gonna have to slide in and out, and your buddy in the co-pilot seat's not gonna be blocking you anymore. You can you can get in and out at your at your leisure. So to make things easier with doing variants uh, when you start off with a base is trying to plan out how the variants are going to be and what roadblocks you're going to hit ahead of time that way you don't have any rework to do so thinking about the blue the red and the black at the same time while starting with the black as a base prevents a lot of uh wasted time in the future so right now uh the interior is being cut into a back module and a front module. The red, as the fans will know, are uh, search rescue, you know, a Coast Guard type uh, vehicle. Uh, the blue is more of like interceptor, police uh, interceptor. The black is your uh, mercenary, merc, pirate, militiaman type ship that's geared towards everyone. So, roll on the new Cutlass. They've redesigned the Cutlass and redefined its role with the mantra, fight, carry, board. Forget everything that you know about the Cutlass, uh, especially the Cutlass Black. It's become chunky and less manoeuvrable. The engines don't rotate 368 anymore. Um, they've added plating around the ship, extended the hull out, put more plating down on the wings. Um, the ramp is much, much bigger. This should give a lot more room internally, making the... Time to kill on the ship higher, but also allowing for more space in the ship, carrying of that dragonfly that people wanted. The extra space has also allowed for a living quarters and four bunk beds. Um, and the ship is kind of separated into sections now. The cockpit and the living quarters at the front of the ship, uh, and the turret, which is also accessible by the living quarters. And then there's a cargo area. So the cargo area has an airlock between it and the living quarters, or the rest of the ship. Um, and that's how you exit the ship, via the cargo area. The cockpit has been widened, um, allowing each side um, of the pilot seats, the two pilot seats, and you can get down on each side, which is great. Um, new equipment as well, they've strapped more forward-facing weapons onto the uh, the Cutlass now, so there's a selection of four size three mounts um, pointing forward, which obviously can be gimbaled if you want, um, and those two size three weapons on the turret, allowing for six size three weapons on its current vision. Uh, that's a lot of forward-facing size three guns. Tractor beams. So it looks like it has two front and a single rear tractor beam uh, for boarding, salvage and retrieval. Now, obviously, we don't know too much about tractor beams yet and exactly how they're going to work in the verse. So we'll have to wait for more of that. But just know that it's got tractor beams uh, and that's part of its role. So it's definitely more in line with Drake now as a manufacturer. And I 
I feel that it fills a role in the line of Drake ships in between the Buccaneer and the kind of Caterpillar, which is, is quite nice. It's a, So one of its major uses now, apart from its cargo bay, is also boarding. So the solids of the Cutlass Black now slide open like a double automatic door, allowing passengers to easily exit and enter the craft. The cargo bay is sealed from the rest of the ship, allowing it, for it to be constantly depressurised if required, meaning your boarding crew in the back can be ready for EVA and bored at a moment's notice. It's very similar to how they described the Prowler, but obviously without the force field protection, um, and obviously you need to depressurise that section rather than um, have it pressurised like you could in the Prowler. It, in fact, does very much more suit that Drake aesthetic because it's got the similar features to something without the bells and whistles, without the extra protection, uh, and it's just kind of like, well, this kind of works. But, there is plenty of room for boarding marines as well, and the loot that they bring back, as well as using a dragonfly as a support vehicle. That ramp at the back will allow for a dragonfly to get in and out. So stealth was one of the original supposed um, roles of the Cutlass Black, and um, that was mainly really, I suppose, to do with its stealthier components. But I suspect that stealth in Star Citizen will come from a choice of components and signature management. So if you had dreams of running this Cutlass Black as a stealthy pirate ship, then that is still a possibility under the right circumstances. That said, these mechanics are very much being fleshed out, and we have to wait and see exactly how they're going to work. But a lot of this is going to be down to your choice and, and management. Being a fighter, so the ship does have front-facing armaments of a very powerful variety, and that turret with two size threes um, going 360 degrees as well, being able to cover the ship. It's not a dogfighter, it's not super agile, and it's not intended to fight sabres and super hornets, or avoid their missiles very well. So keep that in mind. Its role is not to engage dogfighters by itself. That said, if other ships are with you in combat and you can bring your weapons to bear, I suspect that this will be a rather decisive victory for you and your party if you're fighting yeah, Super Hornets and you've got a couple of other fighter escorts with you, like Buccaneers, and they're fighting the Buccaneers, you might be able to shoot down the Super Hornet rather easily. Uh, exploring and treasure hunting. So, the Cutlass that Cutlass Black anyway, can carry a Dragonfly now. And I expect that a lot of explorers will want to use this and treasure hunters. You're going to be able to bring loot on from your salvages and derelicts that you find, and you're about to land on planets, use that Dragonfly to explore, um, and mark maybe any loot that you want to pick up later with your Dragonfly uh, or, your, or your Cutlass, bring it back aboard. So this is basically now the cheapest boarding and dropship in the game, effectively. $100 for that Cutlass Black. But we, I suppose we should now make comparisons with the Freelancer, Redeemer, Hoplite, and Prowler. The Freelancer is probably going to end up more agile and might have a better choice of components than the Cutlass um, when it comes to like shields and power plants. But it isn't a dropship like the Cutlass Black is. And it's not going to have the, the speed and efficiency um, that the Freelancer has. Now, the Redeemer is still being worked on. It's going to be a gunship, dropship. We're... Um, it's going to have its rework as well. It's, it's having a big rework. We're going to need that really to have a full comparison. But at the moment, the Redeemer is $250, which is $150 more than that black. Um, so just keep that in mind. The Vanguard Hoplite looks like it's going to have the firepower of a Vanguard, uh, but um, some of the dropship and boarding abilities of other ships. But it doesn't have those side doors that open. It just has a ramp. And the Cutlass can make use of a dragonfly and i believe that the hoplite cannot expect again 250 dollars ish for a price range for that hoplite so it's going to be significantly more expensive but it is possibly going to be better for ship to ship combat the prowler is at the top end of drop ships and something that you should aim for in game yes it's going to be better than the cutlass black at pretty much everything boarding wise for the most part, anyway. It's not got the room for the Dragonfly um, or any real cargo space for loot. Not to mention the ship is $425, which is a lot more than $100. So, I mean, these are ships that are very much more focused on different areas. I, however, love that Cutlass Black. Originally, the Caterpillar was described as the evil twin of the Freelancer, and I think this actually now describes the Cutlass Black better. 
there are going to be downsides with it being Drake as a manufacturer. Um, you're going to have to make concessions with equipment because it's Drake. To me, the manufacturer has downsides, normally that being exposed and vulnerable components. I also expect the hulls will have restrictions on what power plants and shield generators it might be able to use. Um, go ballistic uh, with all the weapons on the ship. You might not have much space um, for for rest of the stuff on on board, go energy, and you might not have the coolers or the power to use your weapons for a very long period of time. It's likely you're going to make concessions. It's likely that you might have incredibly high signal um, uh, if you're going all energy. So you're going to have to you have to work on your ship. This rework was very much needed though, and now I'm definitely going to be getting myself a Cutlass Black again. It's a multi-role ship, but for me, being able to be that cheap boarding ship, drop ship. APC kind of thing. That's just fantastic. It's focus uh, away from being maneuverable seems to be smart. I am really looking forward to seeing more and that Cutlass Red and the Cutlass Blue will also be getting a similar rework but we will revisit them once the Cutlass Black um, ha has had its rework and we know more about the others. Tell me what you think of that Cutlass rework. Do you love it as much as I do? Do you like the direction of the old Cutlass more? Will you be picking one up yourself? Are you an original Cutlass owner and are upset by what they've done? Or like, yes, I'm glad I stuck with the Cutlass. What do you expect from the red and blue as well with these reworks? Remember, commenting on any of our Star Citizen content each month gives you a chance to win a Star Citizen ship for the month of December. That is your choice of an 85X or an Avenger Titan, which you will choose once you win. So you don't need to choose now, just comment. Comment on, on telling me things about the Cutlass with this one. Both those ships will come with that lifetime insurance as well. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help me guys. And I will see you in the verse.